Okay, everybody. Welcome to the Fundamentals of Commercial Real Estate Listings, uh, class number three. Uh, and we are talking about um, how to read the listings and the offer letter. So how I wanna structure these classes are first to understand um, the important terms of the listing. And then that's gonna include how the marketing reads, which we're gonna go over today. We're gonna to include um, all the important terms which we went over last time. And we're also gonna talk about um, the due diligence of, of the listing. So in terms of before you go get the listing or when you bring a client to a listing to really understand um, a lot of the terms and the value uh, that we discussed in the previous classes. After that, when you get an understanding of how a listing is um, structured and what the important uh, uh, information is behind the listing, then you can go and get the listing. And we'll be talking about listing agreements. We'll be talking about um, um, uh, negotiating offers and things like that. So for this class, um, you know, I'm just gonna start off real quick with just letting everyone know that Project Queens, uh, we are a commercial real estate company that specializes in uh, Queens, New York. Um, and our company is growing at a very rapid pace right now. I think we got a couple of new agents in last week. And the way the company is structured is that uh, we support our agents on every level. So basically, you know, we have three different levels of agents. One is a showing agent. So new agents that want to learn how to do commercial real estate, we get the listing, we get the leads. Uh, Project Queens does all the due diligence, the marketing, and um, organizes everything. And the showing agent just needs to go and show the property. And before the showing agent goes to show the property, uh, we sit down, understand the listing, kind of like how we're going over today, but more in detail because it's in-house. We pre prepare them for the listing to bring their business card, bring the flyer, understand what's going on, how to confirm the meeting, and they just got to show. And after they show, if we get a deal done, then they can be involved in the process. That's for a newbie agent that wants to learn, but um, can go do real estate activities without messing up. Then we have a co-listing agent, which is like something uh, like the next level of the showing agent where we go and get the listings together, um, the listing co-listing agent kind of understands the properties much better and can do the understand the marketing, take the calls, set their own meetings, um, negotiate their own offers. But the company is still here and it supports in every way to make sure. And then we have the listing agent, which um, whether or not I already have the exclusive listing or if I um, just have a lead, the listing agent just take it and run with it. And those are different levels of splits. So we support every type of agent from the beginner to expert. And we're here to do uh, quality business and, and, and really to expand the Queens market share and really take, take over the whole entire Queens. So that's that for that. Um, our company was opened in 2020, January 1st, and coronavirus came and it was very hard for everything, but we're expanding super rapidly. And I'm just going to finalize with one thing. Um, commercial real estate is hard. It takes a long time to make money. It takes a long time to do it really well. And um, now that I'm expanding the business, um, I see this huge workload ahead of me. And I really got to me personally, I really have to dig down and, um, and get everything done. But uh, Grant Cardone, someone I, I, I really look up to, he said something that whatever it is you think you need to do in order to accomplish a goal, it's going to be 10 times harder. So even in my mind, the smoothest way possible to bring this company to the next level, I'm like, mm, that's a lot of work. And I got to remember what he said because I know it's going to be 10 times harder already than I think I, that's in my head. So. To begin with the class, what I want to do is something a little different today, and we're going to go look at a uh, at a listing on LoopNet, 
and this is going to be a project queens listing so loopnet is the zillow of commercial real estate so um ba -ba -ba. when anyone looks for oh did i do that right uh, you see it all right cool so when everyone looks for a um listing online they go to loopnet so what i want to do is explain this i'm explaining a couple of other different marketing pieces so this will give you a really good idea of how commercial real estate works in the eyes of the person searching and the person listing it um it's basically like if a buyer was looking for houses on zillow all the information there now out of all the different places a commercial real estate broker can market loopnet is going to have the most detailed information so um can you see my mouse and stuff too all right perfect so loopnet is loopnet.com uh it's i'm just going to take it from the top on the top is the address 3710 queens boulevard it says how much space is available and it's in long island city new york on the very top um there's pictures which is cool because that makes sense to put the pictures up there this is the beautiful this building that uh project queens is listing it's a brand new development there's first floor retail second floor retail slash office third fourth fifth floor retail on the very top is a rooftop so you can kind of scroll pictures um and again these are all pictures that we've taken so you know we want to put the lobby we want to show that the seven trains there and as you go down that's me michael wang project queens contact us very similar to zillow side panel and the way loopnet structures it which it, which i really like because um they're smarter than me and it's more detailed than you know even our own website you go with highlights Rooftop garden, valet parking, separate atrium, spectacular views of Manhattan, private office lobby, massive frontage and exposure to the seven train commuters. As you can see, this is very specific to this property and um, it's information that we typed in ourselves. Now, as you go down, it says space availability. Five is the number of spaces available within the um, building. So I've had that open for you, but now I just wanna show you the five. So we got first floor, second floor, fourth floor, fifth floor, and sixth floor. Why is the third floor not available? Because I leased it out already, right? Uh, we also leased out the uh, first floor, uh, two of the first floor spaces, which you'll see shortly. But within this space availability is like a summary over here. You see the suite number, the size. It has a special column for ceiling height um, because that's how important ceiling height is in a commercial real estate listing. The term is like how much, how long you can lease it for. Is it a one-year contract, a five-year contract, a 10-year contract? And most of the time in Queens, you'll find that this is negotiable. Um, the rate is the price per square foot or how much rent per month. We have it upon request because, um, and, and I used to put all of the pricing down at the, uh, at the rate. But now because of COVID, everything really is very negotiable. Um, a lot of the properties I'm putting the pre-COVID listing price because we don't know what price to put. Um, but in the background, we say it's negotiable. So just putting the listing price is a little misleading. Uh, so and that's why I've changed everything to upon request. Um, the type is also, also negotiable. And I think this is like, um, whether it's triple net, modified gross, or something like that. And that's what we talked about in the first couple of classes. So not a lot of info there. Um, I did it kind of purposely, not a lot of info to get all the calls in, and then we can talk about it. Again, if it's a seller deal, and um, you know if the market's more stable and we're kind of more firm on what we're asking for, I would put everything there. I'm not trying to waste anyone's time, but because of the nature of this market and how much really negotiating there is going on because of COVID, um, having it kind of flexible like this is the most realistic way I can present the information. Um, so that's that. When you press down, the listing kind of opens up and you see the information. We got the floor plans here. Uh, this is suite one. Uh, this is the first floor also and has like the parking information. The space use here, that's retail because the ground floor is retail usually. The condition is raw space. So if you go in, raw space usually means uh, like the way we have it right now, 
It's all concrete. And the availability, availability is now. As you put in the spaces, you're allowed to put a, a, a description. So I'm not gonna go over that. Uh, but the descriptions are a lot of work. You know, if you really wanna make it sound right, um, you gotta be a writer. Now, similar to the highlights that were shown before, we have the highlights of the space. Now these, uh, new space never previously occupied, located in line with other retail, anchor space, central heating, security system, CCTV, corner space, high ceilings. Um, these I can just click from LoopNet. Uh, these are their own descriptions. Uh, so, you know, a lot of the time what you see is it are a lot of listings. They don't really have any of this because just like entering something in the MLS, people get lazy. They just don't want to click every button. Uh, the descriptions can be very simple. Um, there's not a lot of pictures. How many times you go to like Zillow and this is like just one picture of the house, nothing inside. So you can really make this as detailed as you want to make it. Um, so, you know, it, it's good to be very thorough and, and click everything out of a matter of, of not only to make it clear, but just out of a matter of principle, you know, you want to operate, this is commercial real estate, a lot of people's money are on the line, the commission checks are big, and the people leasing the space are spending a lot of money per month. So you, you, it's, not, it's not right to be lazy about these things. There's also a column to um, add your own uh, information, I believe, in these. So, so that happens. So I'll show you this one real quick. The second floor space is going to be very similar. The third floor space is going to be very similar. Or fourth, I'm sorry, fourth floor. But uh, you can see the space use is now office. So that's changed from retail to office. You can see um, the office description here is different from the first floor. Now it says the fourth floor consists of 12,890 square feet of medical and professional office. Newly built, this floor has wraparound, floor to ceiling windows, large balcony, all of which showcases a spectacular view of Manhattan and Long Island City. So you don't have that view on the first floor. So again, you really want to uh, put as much information as possible. Fits five to 104 people. Even these are a little bit different. So you see that there. The fifth floor, same thing. And the rooftop now. Uh, the rooftop has pictures. The reason why I didn't put pictures here is because the space is raw space. So it'd just be a bunch of concrete. Uh, when it is in that condition, the floor plan is usually enough. I could have put a picture of the views, which would make sense. You know, maybe I should do that. Now the rooftop is beautifully built out. So you have this rooftop space, which is um, meant for like a nightclub, not a nightclub, but like a, a rooftop lounge, a rooftop restaurant. Um, you can see the outside, you can see the inside. And also we put the floor plan, the shaded area shows like an outdoor deck. And it also has this information. So be before we move down, I just want to go over real quick. If you are a tenant looking for stuff and you come to this building, you said, hmm, I need office space in Long Island City. In my search, I typed in, uh, you know, Queens Boulevard. Let me show you that actually. If I can move this control thing. Oh, I could move the control thing. All right, perfect. So this is the LoopNet standard search. Over here, we go, okay, I need to lease something here. Um, the space use is office, and I want to look in Long Island City. Oh, no. That's Long Island City. I search for it. Now, all this stuff comes on top, and you can see bam, 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 all the different listings, and eventually, uh, let's say we want something uh, bah, 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 available space is something that people use all the time, right? Like, so let's say we want a 5,000 square foot office uh, up to 15,000, you know? And now these bigger offices come up and anyone that's searching for office now will slow down and, and kind of look at this stuff and say, okay, built in 1966, 20,000, here's the price. Boom, boom, here's the price. Here's the price. When you scroll, 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 and you're like, eh, some of these are older. Uh, this looks nice. Let me let me click on that. Uh, you can kind of go down and say, mm, this looks nice. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, this building. This is building. This building. This building is beautiful. Let me click on that. 
and it brings you back to our listing. Now, I want more info, right? Okay, I need a 5,000 to 15,000 square foot office. I see these pictures. Okay, this looks nice. This is nice. That's cool. Oh, it's got a rooftop garden. Oh, valley parking. Great. Okay, here's the spaces. Ooh, let's go with the fifth floor space because it's big. Um, and then you can get more information here. And it starts to really give you uh, an idea of, of, of what it is. And they go, oh, I really, really like this. What? I wonder how much it is. Oh, man, upon request, that's annoying. Let me call this guy. And then they'll call me. And then after I talk to them, I'll be like, hey, I usually put the price, but it's negotiable because of COVID, so let's talk about it. And at that point, I can start really being a broker, do my job, speak to this person, and see what they want. Um, if I find that they're, they, it seems to be a good fit, we'll schedule a showing, and we'll try to get the job done. Now, moving along, uh, LoopNet puts this information in. It's kind of like when you go to Zillow, and it has a lot of extra information about the neighborhood and all that stuff. Um, that's why LoopNet is the most detailed version of what we uh, can be uh, uh, most detailed version of all the different marketing platforms we use. And it's also why it's the go-to. So uh, the other tenants in the building is the College of Mount St. Vincent. There's property facts. The minimum divisible space is 2000. The property type is retail, but there's a subtype that says retail office, which is correct. The gross leasable area is 74,000 square feet. Then we have a description that's about the property. Uh, I'm not sure if it was up there already, but you know, if you did have different types of descriptions, some spaces are larger than others and you require multiple descriptions based on what you're looking at, you can put it there. Um, then it goes to attachments. So we have this brochure, 37 Plaza brochure, uh, and this will be the Project Queens brochure. So let's see what our brochure looks like. Uh, this is what we made for 37 Plaza, which is this building. Uh, it's going to be similar to a lot of brochures that you see. The brochure, uh, a lot of time in the email, I just link them to LoopNet because it just really has all the information, but people still like brochures. Um, in the Project Queen brochure, we have a picture of the building, summary, a little bit about the neighborhood, right? Another picture, some design aspect about the building about the retail, again, square footage, inquiry, inquiry, ceiling height, a map, floor plans, we lease these two spaces, there's two left. We gotta update looping that with this picture. Office, right? Floor plans, the rooftop again, floor plans and contact. So you can see here that the brochure is really, really um, much less detailed than LoopNet. And there's different places to use a brochure. Um, sometimes a website link just doesn't cut it like in an email blast or maybe like a social media post and people want to get this thing. And then by being able to maybe not even send this as an attachment, but maybe as pictures, you can get your prospect to get to the get over the first step of even caring or just not skipping past the email. And they can be like, oh, this new, what's Michael sending me again? I get like, too many emails from this dude. Oh, that's a nice building in Long Island City. Oh, I have a client for that. Or, oh, I've been looking. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. Well, what do they got here? A uh, nice lobby. And I needed an office. Oh, you know what? Let me see. And then on the emails, they click here, click loop that for more details. Let me click it. I'll bring you back here. And then they'll get more information. But again, ultimately, this is like a funnel that's leading them to ultimately talk to this guy right here. Um, so after that, that's the brochure. Then there's links. Here's a YouTube video and here's the website. So Project Queens, you know, we make videos. I don't know how much you've been following, but there's me chatting. I need to lose weight there. Um, there's more chatting and here's the video that talks more in detail about it. Again, videos are a very good way to show more of the space. Um, and it also adds more color, more color than a picture. This video is three minutes long. I'm probably talking about certain things or that just don't make sense to be put even into LoopNet. Um, and we do this kind of for every listing. So that gray space we're talking about before, that's cool. That that and the views, you can you can kind of catch it here, you know. 
and you can see me scrolling over here and they show different stuff. Here's the, uh, here's the rooftop. So now like more above and beyond the pictures, you get a real idea of, um, of what we're doing here. So I love video, uh, regardless of what business you're in, video and social media is like, is the new form of marketing. You have to do it even if, whether you're selling dumplings or selling billion dollar real estate, right? So that's that. And then it also links to our website listings page, which here shows the video. Again, this is our website that describes everything. And we got blah, 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 full details on LootNet. So uh, not everyone uses the template that I use, obviously, but in, in, in theory, it's all similar to this. So we, we draw their attention with whatever marketing that we have. If it's a banner on the building, you know, it's, it's just a few words, space release. Uh, and, and a lot of time you only have that much bandwidth and, and space to market. So that brings them to like the website with more or it ultimately brings them to LoopNet that has even, even more. And then, um, and then they contact us. So going back to here now on the very bottom, LoopNet is now just showing uh a map you know they, they kind of provide all this stuff if they, they have traffic counts and this is just starting to add more stuff walk score 94 transit score 100 bike score 89 nearby major retailers and again this is all auto populated by LoopNet. uh the transportation is down here like the seven and the e and the r they're all very close well particularly the seven is like right down the block um then you have like the Long Island Railroad. And then on the bottom, they do something really smart, which is like, you may also like some of these. So from a person that's interested in the space perspective, it's, uh, it's, it's really good. Uh, it's a really good resource to find space. And then on the bottom, you have all this stuff, um, more nearby listings and, and their bottom uh, navigation panel. So that is how the loop net works. That is how you read a listing and i'm going to stop the share and can you see me now all right awesome so that is how a a listing reads so from the perspective of someone looking you could see how that's effective um so i'm going to put this in context a little bit in terms of us as, as brokers what we're doing we need to populate this thing, right? So let's say we got the listing already. We need to understand, we need to go, and first of all, we need to go and take pictures. All right, so we need to take nice quality pictures. Uh, we need to go take a video. And then we need to speak to the owner on a big building like this. Maybe we speak to the architect. Maybe we speak to the construction manager. And we need to understand what the highlights of the building are. As a broker, sometimes they're not even aware of certain highlights that are important. And, and as we walk through the building, we make a mental note or we write it down in our phones, uh, what highlights would be attractive to potential leads. Then we need to understand the size. We need to speak to the owner about what kind of price they're looking for. And when you speak to the owner about the price, we do our due diligence on the market. We come from our perspective on what we think is a low medium and high price and we negotiate with the ownership at that time what we think what, what price we're going to go out at also the terms are important sometimes like we, we talked about last time in the first class a office building on a triple net lease is not going to work out for whatever reason it's just gonna it's just gonna scare away a lot of the potential leads because the terms you're asking for don't make sense right then after we go understand all of that information, we need to write in, we need to communicate this to the public, right? So you don't just kind of slap everything there. You need to, our, this is our job as brokers. You need to write the copy very clearly. You need to make the video and the brochure very inviting where all the right information is easy to be seen. How much, how many times do you get an email and you just skip over it? 
especially when it's like from me and you get like three emails from me a day. Like I'm about to block this dude. And if he sends me like these long texts or just a bunch of links or just a bunch of blah, it's almost annoying. It's like auto block. But if I can make it even for someone that's not looking for space, nice and clean, some pictures. If you want more, click these buttons. And when you click them, it's like kind of nice. Then it really helps when you're, when you're emailing 3,000 people, when you're blasting out to 30,000 people, it really helps take even 1%, 2%, 3% of these people to take the next step. It, 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 it'll draw them in. Um, then you need to go understand the neighborhood. You need to understand the transportation around it, um, how old the building is, how new the building is, and um, all that stuff. So, you know, that is a lot to get to this point where you can populate the loop net listing nicely. It's a lot, a lot, a lot of work. The due diligence on the property is something that I'm going to go over maybe next time or maybe next, next time. And that's the pricing, right? That's the neighborhood. That's the type of building. What kind of tenants are around? This is what you need to talk about to get the listing. Um, so then only after you understand the building and you know how you're going to market it, right? And this is why I'm showing you the loop net kind of, kind of now. Then do you go approach ownership and say, hey, I know your building. I know how to market it. I will get the job done. And you're equipped to speak professionally and not just really speak professionally, but you, you really do know the, the product you're, you're, you're trying to get to do the job for, and then you're able to get the job done. Um, and then you go there by making an appointment and bringing the listing agreement. And we're gonna talk about the listing agreement in like the next, 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 next one, right? Like then maybe like three or four. After you understand those pieces, then we'll go over the listing agreement. Very legalese, very technical, but ultimately makes a lot of sense because you want to be able to speak to the ownership and not just throw them some paper that your broker gave you to go sign. You want to know what you're talking about. Um, the next thing I want to talk about. So I'm going to let everyone. I'm going to take a cup of a sip of coffee. I'm going to let everyone process this for like. 20 seconds before I just jump um, to something else. It's like when you do a workout, like, you know, there's, you gotta take your water break, process this stuff, because I'm going to be jumping to the next topic here on the class, which is the offer letter. And the reason why I'm going to the offer letter kind of early, which seems like it should be later in the stage, right? Understanding how all this stuff works and then getting the listing and marketing. And then, and then you put the offer letter in after you've been showing the potential clients and put an offer letter in is because the offer letter, I'm, I'm trying to build like a structure uh, an overall general structure. So you get an idea of what we're working with and then we'll start filling in that structure. And the offer letter is the important general terms to close the deal. And you'll see a lot of the terms on the offer letter. I'm looking at myself over here. Um, you'll see a lot of the terms on the offer letter are the same terms that we reviewed in the loop net listing, it's the same terms that when I said I gave the very general summary a couple of days ago. Um, uh, are in the offer letter, and, and the reason is because we need the we need the basics before we go into um, before we go into uh, the more detailed negotiations of the actual lease contract or the sales contract, where a lot of times you have attorneys battling it out, and that's that's a whole nother thing. We'll get to attorneys. In the next, 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 next class, right? So I'm going to start the screen share and we are on offer letter. Good. All right. Most people I know tell me not to do this class. They say, 
Mikey, what the hell are you doing? Why would you teach these people? Why are you going to get the competition? And I think I addressed this last time, so I'm not going to go into it, but I don't care. I want everyone to learn. I want everyone to do well. And what I really want are agents to join this company and work together with, or do your own thing, become an awesome agent in your own right, and we'll do deals together in the future. Um, so if I hooked you up one way, just hook me back up a little bit and we're golden. Um, bah, bah, bah. Okay, so in this offer letter, I highlighted everything in yellow to make it easy. There's tons of brokers out there that are gonna be watching this class and telling uh, some admin to retype all this stuff and make it exactly the same. Um, or you can just email me, I'll send it to you, man. Project Queens, you have the date, you have this, uh, who you're sending it to, you have the information about the company. And uh, that's just normal standard stuff. Then you have a proposal lease agreement with the tenant and the landlord at this location. That's also to uh, just address, to clarify what we're talking about. Dear person, we as the exclusive agents, I highlight this because we're not always exclusive agents, right? Uh, we've been authorized by the tenant or the landlord or whoever to submit the following proposal for the lease for the retail space at the above reference property, above the reference property here. Basic information. Uh, let me make this a little bit better. Okay. Basic information. Who's the landlord? Who's the tenant? The premise is what the space is. And if you really want to get very professional and detailed with it, which sometimes you need to do because that's what your clients are expecting on a professional level. Sometimes you don't want to make it too detailed because the clients don't want it. You have a machine, a computer on this side and a computer on this side, and you need to match the inputs the correct way. Two super advanced computers, you got like advanced cables. Two like really, really old school computers, you use like the 1990s cables, right? Uh, the advanced cable sometimes doesn't fit this machine. But it, this template is um, all encompassing. So I'll, it doesn't get more advanced than this. And this is so you have everything. And then if you are doing a more basic field, then you delete them. But we're going to have a, a, as crosshatch on exhibit A site plan, landlord, blah, blah, blah. And this is to designate the premise. Sometimes we have an exhibit A, which is super detailed, like a floor plan, highlighting exactly what the space is. So there can't be any mistake on what we're leasing. The base term is how many years? And then there's an option. The tenant usually has to give a notice of when they want to exercise the uh, option. I just want to check real quick how many people are watching on Facebook. <laughs> Should I do that right now? Is that, that's like super not professional, but, but I don't care. And I don't even know how to check it. So, okay. Anyway, sorry about that, everyone. Where am I at? I'm here. Is it good again? All right. Uh, then you have your base rent. You know, you usually, a lot of the time it's stated per annum, which is per year. You have your option rent, um, which is how much the rent is going to be. Um, you have your escalations, which is in almost every single deal. It's uh, an escalation is the increase on the rent yearly. And I believe that's like a hedge for inflation. Another side note of these classes is um, on the first, first class, someone said, um, I'm explaining the cap rates incorrectly. And I found that strange because, you know, I speak to so many people about it, but how could I be wrong? So the math was correct, right? But he said that the theory and the derivation of what I was saying was wrong. So I'm very thankful for that because I, I knew this from the start. Uh, me teaching this class, these classes, I may be the person that learns the most from it. So thank you everybody for watching and thank you for any questions or comments. Um, any kind of feedback is just ways for me to improve my own game. Um, continuing on, we have the taxes. So remember we talked about what are the important aspects? It's the base rent, right? The rent, the tax, the maintenance and the utilities. So here we hit the base rent. That's like super obvious, right? We wanna, how much are we renting it for? And then we have the taxes here, right? And 
because we wrote retail up here, it says tenant shall pay its pro rata share blah, 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 of the increase of the taxes. So rather than paying the full tax, we're doing the increases. And um, you know that, that's more detailed stuff. You can Google it. We kind of talked about it last time. Uh, so you can go back to the other classes. Then we have tenant improvement allowance is how much the tenants allowed to spend. It's like a credit towards their construction. Uh, you don't see that so much in Queens uh, and usually the only the more corporate and the larger landlords consider things like that. Then you have possession date, which is um, when the tenant is able to take possession of the space. Usually that means get the keys and is allowed to enter and start doing what they need to do, such as the construction that the tenant improvement allowance is given credit for. Rent commencement date, XX days after possession date. What, what do you mean by rent commencement date? I thought like when I get the keys, I just start paying rent. No, because there's free rent, right? Um, anyone that's done commercial deals, that's uh, a very basic and common thing to be asked, like, hey, the um, how much free rent is the landlord willing to give? In Queens, it's much less than what you would expect if you were coming from out of state. Or uh, you know if you're if you're doing large build outs in, in Manhattan with corporate landlords. Landlord's work is rather than the tenant coming in and doing construction, the landlord has to deliver the space in a certain way. So if it's like um, concrete, right? If it was a gray box, which what we call, and they want to deliver it in a vanilla box condition. That would mean that the floors are in, the walls and drywall are up, and the utilities are stubbed. So before the tenant walks in, they're expecting to receive the space in a certain way. If the space is what we call as is, that means the landlord's not touching it at all. Whatever you see is what you get. And then the tenant needs to go in and kind of fix it up. A lot of the time, the more uh, experienced tenants, they will they're willing to take on an as-is project because they're used to construction. But uh, a lot of newer tenants, they don't want to take on the construction because they, they've never done it before. And it's a huge variable. And they don't want to get surprised with like having to fix the floors and the electric and all these things. And before you know it, they have to spend 50 grand to even get into the space. So that's something to be negotiated and it always is negotiated. Then we have permitted use. What are they allowed to do? Like. Uh, if you said you're opening a fast food restaurant and I find that you open an amusement park, like that's not going to work. Exclusive use. A lot of the time, uh, Starbucks or a big coffee shop, if they move into your shopping center, they say that you can't, you can't lease the space to another uh, coffee store. Or if I'm taking a bank to a, a shopping center and they already have a bank, sometimes I go to the owner and I say, hey, I got the I got the perfect, perfect deal for you. Um, and they're willing to pay double what you want. But um, the landlord will say, sorry, we have a bank in there and they have exclusive use costs. SNDA, that's something for the financing and the, what the banks want. We're not going to get into that. Environmental, uh, these are clauses where people say like they want to make sure it's not messed up environmentally. Then there's a subletting clause, which I'm not, so I'm not going to get into all this stuff because um, I'm going to stop this year. I don't know, can I pause this year? Do you see me now? Hold on. Did Zoom share? Okay. So some of this stuff I'm not going to get into because, like I said, these are like all encompassing. This is like a super, super detailed offer letter. A lot of time, like this is like four pages, like this long. A lot of time I offer a letter like this big. Tell me what the important thing is. What's the rent? What's the option? Blah, 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 done. So being that this is like a, a beginner intro class, I'm not gonna get into all this crazy stuff. Um, we can discuss it like in the future. And the, the, it's if you're really, really good at this stuff, it all ties in and you may not use it on every deal, but you will use it on some deals. and 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 uh, there's a there's a bit of uh, it, there's a bit of uh, comfort you can give to your clients that letting them know that you understand the whole process and that you do not 
you will you will watch their back on a lot of variables that maybe a newer agent like doesn't understand. So let me start the screen share again. Oh, this is fun. Man, technology is so awesome. Uh, right to terminate, this is important. Sometimes if it's a five, 10 year lease, they say, look, you can get out of it if you give us a heads up. And that's called like a good guy clause sometimes, or maybe the right to terminate isn't written as a good guy clause. But um, you'll hear a lot of the time, even the newbie brokers are like, hey, is there a good guy clause? Hey, is there a good guy clause? They don't even know what they're really asking for, but that's basically the right to get out of the space uh, contingent upon blah, 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 blah. Uh, landlord liens, I'm not gonna get utilities. That's the another important part of what we spoke about. The utilities is all the way on the bottom here. Uh, usually it's more up, but um, that talks about who pays water, electric, gas, all that good stuff. L landlord repairs, and it talks about what the landlord's responsible for long-term. If the roof breaks in and it leaks, who's gonna fix it? You know, These are very, very important things. You don't want to be three years into your business and find out you signed a lease that you're responsible to repair the roof, which is going to cost you 100 grand, right? So moving along, we talked about signage. A lot of people want to put their sign outside and it just says what you are allowed or not, not allowed to do, what kind of alterations you can make in the building, tenants' plans. Um, Landlords don't want their tenants to just walk into the building and say, oh, I'm going to build out a restaurant and just start building whatever they want. Uh, so having the plans clause usually says something like the landlord has to approve your plans um, and they're not going to hold it back without like some um, without. Um, I should just probably read it. <laughs> uh, landlord shall approve or disapprove. Same with specific reasons and instructions regarding any disapproved matters within 10 days or the same shall be deemed approved. Tenants, architects, and engineers shall be certified to self-certify plans, applicants, and permits once approved by the landlord. So these like are super small things kind of, they're not small, but they can be looked over. And if, you're, if everyone's cool with each other and you didn't address these things, then it's fine. But if you don't address these, and then in the process of like doing your plans, learners say, hey, you can't do that. And they don't, you got to wait for my approval. And they take six months to get back to you. That becomes a huge issue. So, you know, these things can get very, very specific. And that's why you hire uh, attorneys to go over these. And I always would always recommend using an attorney. Like I'm pretty good at this stuff. But if I were to open a business, I'd almost 100% of the time using an attorney, un unless it's like, unless I could really, really figure it out. But but still, I mean, it's better to be safe than sorry. The lease form even says whose lease are we gonna use. Is the landlord gonna provide the lease or is it the tenant gonna provide the lease? Then you have the tenant's work, right? We talk about the tenant's work. Outdoor seating is something that's like pretty, pretty, pretty new for COVID. Permits and brokers, right? It always has the broker thing. This proposal is being submitted with the understanding that one full commission is being paid, blah, 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 blah. Right. Michael Wang, CEO. I'm actually not the CEO. Uh, I'm the founding broker here. I don't like to call myself the CEO. I am I work for you. And uh, over here, exhibit A, uh, when we were talking about the, the premise, right? We have a cross hatch on exhibit A site plan. Landlords to represent and warrant the accuracy of the dimensions. Like I said, a lot of time the floor plan will show you exactly what is being leased. And then exhibit B, landlords work. People want to make sure per the exhibit. Uh, ba -ba -ba, landlords work. Landlords shall provide improvements to the premises at landlords' cost and expense in accordance with the landlords work exhibit attached here to as exhibit B. You don't want to, you don't want to um, sign a lease and then landlord says it's gonna take two months to get the space ready. And then you go in and they didn't do anything, right? And they say, oh, you know, it's, it's a box, you know, we, we, we fix it up. And you're like, no, you're not, no, you didn't. It doesn't go in accordance to exhibit B. So these are all like safeguards. Um, now, again, if you, go to a mom and pop 
and a first time uh, business owner and you hit him with this long LOI and, and, and you're like, I learned this from Project Queens. They told me how to write this. This is professional. You know, a lot of that stuff takes a lot of work to get done. And they're going to be like, this is way too complicated. You're being annoying. I don't want to do it like this. That's very possible, right? So like those two machines, um, you may need to eliminate a lot of that and, and just do what makes sense for these two, 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 two people, right? Two clients or right? customers. And maybe they get attorneys to figure it out for them, but sometimes they don't want attorneys. So you want to make it usable for them. Uh, on the flip side, maybe if you're working with two corporate companies, they want it exactly like that. That cross-hatched premise is not like, oh, I took the floor plan and I put it in, I put it in a paint and just like highlighted myself. Like you need to go hire an architect to certify that cross-hatch plan is coming from the architect. We're plugging it in. And then the landlord's architect is double checking it. And then we put it in, right? Um, the, the, the permitting process uh, or uh, the, uh, the plans and, and how that's gonna be used. You know, it's two attorneys are now. So this, this goes to the attorneys and then they draft a lease. Sometimes the leases are 100, like 50 pages. I've seen a hundred page lease before. And they'll start, they'll pull out like 20 or 30 items, some of which are small, but some of which are large. And they're going over like, no, it needs to be 90 days before we do this. And oh, no, it has to be 125 days. And they're going like, it's, they're literally battling out. And uh, we could go over like the lease. We'll go over the lease um, next, next night. And the lease is super boring, but I guess we could do it one of these days. Um, and uh, and we'll take it from there. There's James Chen in the waiting room. Okay. Anyway, all right. So so it's eleven eighteen. I'm glad I had enough to speak about to uh, finish this class off. Thank you, everybody, for joining. All right. Awesome. Thank you, everybody.